Hello, this is Hakadabi, and I'm here with SCP-96, also known as the Shy Guy. Item number SCP-96, Object Class Euclid. According to South Oma, this object is actually neutralized. <sighs> Special Containment Procedures SCP-96 is to be contained in its cell, a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical schools of any kind inside SCP-96's cells. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to detect SCP-96's presence inside the cell. Any and all photos, video, or recordings of SCP-96's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. Blank and O5 Blank. Description: SCP-96 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild nu malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of uh, one and a half meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. SCP-96's jaw can open into four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain similar to an average human, with the exception of the eyes, which are devoid of pigmentation. It is yet not yet known whether SCP-96 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions and is not considered to be sapient. SCP-96 is normally extremely docile, with pressure sensors inside its cell indicating it ends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-96's face, whether it be directly, via video recording, or even a photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-96 will cover its face with its hands and begins and screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Apparently, one or two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-96 will begin and running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point on be referred to as SCP-96-1. Dog man speeds it's have varied from 35 km per hour to redacted km per hour, and seem to depend on distance from SCP-961. At this point, no known material or method can impede SCP-96's progress. The actual position of SCP-961 does not seem to affect SCP-96's response. It seems to have an innate sense of SCP-961's location. This reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. See document 961. Upon arriving at SCP 961's location, the SCP 96 will kill and data expunge SCP 961. Whatever scent of cases have left no traces of SCP 961. SCP 96 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat, data redacted. Due to the possibility of a mass chain reaction, including in breach of foundation and secrecy and large for civilian loss of life, retrieval of a subject should be considered alpha priority. Dr. Blank has also petitioned for immediately termination for immediate termination of SCP in 96. See interview in U961. Order is awaiting approval. Termination order has been approved and is be be carried out on by Dr. Blank on data redacted. See instant 96.1. First, we're going to document 96.1. Experiment 96.1 is had by Dr. Dan. Purpose is to test SCP-96's ability as well obtain a complete physical description of SCP-96. D-9031 is a third or the convicted felon and former tattoo artist. D-9031 is placed inside Bathysphere 303A, which is then lowered into the in a Tonga a Trench off the coast of New Zealand. Position is approximately blank kilometers from SCP-96's temporary containment cell at site blank. 
The following was recorded via video surveillance inside Rathus Hill 303A, between it and Dr. Dan's control site on the New Zealand mainland. Rathus Sphere 303A, it reaches final depth of, of 10,800 in, in meters. The participants of this conversation are the 9031 and Dr. Erdan. I'm going to call the 9031 on a, on a Bob. It stopped. What now? Do you feel fine? In the sickness? Anything? My ears hurt. That's to be expected. Now on your left should be a steel container. Open it and there will be a, an yellow folder holding several photographs. Open it and describe the first photograph, please. D9031 Bob of complies. The camera's located so the photograph cannot be seen. Nothing. It's an empty cell. Thank you. Please set this photograph face down in the receptacle or to your right and look at the next photograph. <sighs> it's the same cell, but there's a foot in it, I think. Describe it, please. Uh, it's Pell and Bellany. Sorry, creepy, actually. Place the photograph in your receptacle. Face down and look at the next one. Okay. Oh, frick! Describe the photograph. It's, uh, how no, some creepy person. Describe the photograph, uh, please. Heck, man. His Pell has white eyes and something freaked up is happening with his mouth. What the heck is this thing? At this point, approximately 1.32 standard time, Dr. Dan and an experiment's control is notified that SCP-96 has breached containment. The fastest path to SCP-961 has been cleared of civilians and other image capturing devices, and SCP-96 is now being tracked by a satellite via tracking collar. On your right, there should be another steel container. Open it. It's a pad of paper and a pencil. Yes, please draw a sketch of the photograph you saw. This would be 96 one Or, as I'm going to keep on calling him, Bob was an expletive and spent the next 20 minutes drawing a sketch of the photograph. At the time of com completion, SCP-96 is confirmed to be an unknown on an amount of kilometers away from SCP-961. I'm done. Good. Place the drawing into reset. Have to call on your left and close the door. Bob complies and is sketch. Actually, it's about to sphere or 33A in a watertight buoyancy container. The other photographs are then in incinerated on in the onboard incinerator. What now? Please stand by. 40 minutes pass. SCP-96 is now confirmed to be he had Bob's position and is diving. Transponder signal ends at, at, at 9,339 9, meters as pressure goes beyond the device's operational limits. The camera shows the atmosphere shaking slightly from SCP-961 from Bob's reaction. It is assumed SCP-96 is on the hole and is visible through the viewport. Oh, frick! <laughs> Heck, 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 what the frick is that? The yellow auto feed is cut as a whole of bolt, as the sphere or 33 is, is breached. SV96 is recovered by surface recovery team Fox Truck 303A without incident. Sketch of SCP 96 is also recovered, and a quick test confirms no hostile reaction from SCP 96. Sketch is sent to experiment control on New Zealand while SCP 96 is moved to permanent containment. Now, there's an incident. I had to check the length. It's a pretty long one. This is incident 961A. <coughs> so, containment has been attained. Yes, Doctor. Let me see the security footage. We begin a, a, a large steel cube is shown in the middle of a research lab, which is to 
teaming with a dozen or so researchers. In view of the camera is a control booth, displaying readings from the various sensors inside the cube. Fast forward 1 minute 32 seconds. The control booth operator leans forward or alert or to the various readings on the sensors. Approximately 5 seconds later, a steel wall in the containment cube receives a sizable dent bending forward outward. The dent becomes larger before breaking. SCP-96 is seen bending the steel all away, frantically trying to escape. Emergency in a place drop on the cube as the containment breach is sounded. The security tape has uh, SCP-96's face is blurred out as per containment protocol. Two security teams enter the room as SCP-96 breaks out of containment. Live rounds and tranquilizer darts are fired at no visible effect. Approximately 90% of researchers and security personnel had, have directly viewed with SCP-96's face. And a code Lima is declared. The room and surrounding areas are sealed and flushed with blank glass nerve agent. Approximately two minutes later, SCP-96 reaches research site blank and travels as an unknown amount out of of a, at an unknown speed through the desert, or traveling an unknown direction. End log. <sighs> Echo Romeo was assigned to immediate it contained containment breach. When we realized just how big a breach we were dealing with, we were completely overwhelmed. Funny how even the best and brightest minds in the world can be so unprepared. So you are saying it is your own fault? Absolutely not. This was a new discovery in NSCP-96's behavior. We had no way to know. We are lucky it did not turn into an XK. Begin log. Helm cam footage from ER-1. Footage from inside a UH-60 shows SCP-96 on the desert floor, moving at considerable speed. This is, a, is Echo Romeo Actual. We have visual of the target at unintelligible at that expunge, not an increasing. ERA listens to the radio as orders, identified as coming from Dr. Dan or relayed. SP-96 can be seen slow, only gaining speed. ERA motions off camera. ER-3 appears, holding a modified at XM500 an anti-material rifle. Two shots are fired. The first misses and the second hits SP-96 in the lower leg. SCP in 96 stumbles but recovers. Speed change is insignificant. Untouchable. Pete, no effect on target. ERA motions to ER3 again. ER3 fires three more shots. The first two miss and the third hit. It's SCP 96 in the head. SCP 96 falls, skids, and rolls several times, reducing its speed minimally. SCP 96 rolls to its feet and continues unabated. Karen Pan ends up to see the 8 V-22 Ospreys belonging to MTF Tau-1 flying overhead and fast helicopters on the same outbound vector as SCP-96. Camera cuts out. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 1A. 961A. Dr. Arles Save appears very calm, determined, and answers all questions slowly and deliberately. Interviewer. Where were you exactly at the time of breach? On break, getting a cup of coffee. It was pure luck I wasn't caught in the containment area. Describe your actions and directly after the containment breach. I sent Echo Romeo after SV-96 and alerted Dr. Dan to the situation. We then set upon the task of locating SCP-961. Once the general direction of SCP-96 was is determined, I sent Mobile Task Force Tower 1 and I had to evacuate civilian population centers in SCP-96's path, all according to containment protocol. End log. Begin log. We don't interview log, log SCP-961-B. Dr. Daniel or Dan Blank sits patiently. On the table in front of him is what looks to be a set of Modified night vision goggles. <sighs> For the record, where were you exactly during SCP 96's containment breach? In the data expunge mountain range, trying to find more information on SCP 96's origins. It was a quick research expedition, so I left Dr. Erleski in charge of containment. 
He is confident enough, if a bit eager, and has proved himself in the past. This is all confirmed by the various related paperwork, so don't go thinking. It was just for the record, Doctor. Now, knowing that SCP-96 is immune to all forms of damage while in a rage state, why would you order sniper or er attacks from the emergency response team? Why not? If there was a chance to slow down SCP-96 and give MTF Tau one more time, then we had to try it. It put ER in no danger, and the top uppers were in danger of being outrun anyway. Honestly, ER could do would little to ease or little else to help or harm the situation. I see. Now, could you explain this? Interview motions to the goggles lying on the table. Yes, this is Project Scramble, an eyepiece we assigned to ER and MTF Tower 1. Designed by Dr. Lusky and myself, specifically for SV-96. It carries a small microprocessor which constantly analyzes the viewing field for the facial features of SCP-96. Facial recognition software inside instantly identifies them, scrambling the image into an unrecognizable mess before the light it reaches the human eye. It's quite ingenious, really. And expensive. Very. Which is why it's such a shame it didn't work. End log. Begin log. Audio transcript between MTF Tau 1 and modified at EG Sentry's AWOX cost line Big Brother. Elspray's in the air, moving Dyak Sponge at Dyak Sponge, awaiting Vector. Electronic Electronics Online, cruising out to its reach. Uploading program scramble to all camera systems. Cameras online. Big Brother is now watching. What out on Vector is the target currently heading? Target is currently Westburn, traveling on... Frick. He's on the I-40. I think he's just flipped a semi. Um, outbound Vector is Dag Sponge degrees by Dag Sponge. Next on the Vector is Dag Sponge. I'd say a couple hundred kilometers. Frick. MTF. We're suggesting Echo Romeo begin. And evacuating the I-40? I don't know how many cars the target has wrecked. Old one, that's a, a negative, a big brother. ER is reporting that the target is outrunning her, her choppers and that you can't get ahead of him. Then get them to stop the motors on the other lane. I don't know how many people have seen this thing's face. End log. The first three elements of Tau 1 succeeded in gathering the townsfolk in the first three towns without incident. SV-96-1 was confirmed to not be in any of the these when SV-96 ran through the street through each in turn without stopping. Our video log in MTF Tau shows SV-96-1 being identified in the town of Data Expunge and the ensuing incident. Show it. Begin log. Home camp from element 4 to MTF of Tau 1 in the town of Data Expunge. Most of the town people are gathered in the square, all blindfolded, helicopters sweep the town, indistinct orders are heard over loudspeakers from both the helicopters and ground personnel. MTF FT1, okay. The target is entering a proximity, is on. All units activate scramble gear and begin crowd control all procedures. All civilians are not to move from their spot or remove their blind salt. Blindfolds. If you move or touch your blindfold, you will be shot. I repeat, all, all civilians are or is are drowned out by a loud streak coming from outside the camera's view. Approximately two kilometers away, SV-96 is seen into be coming over the crest of the hills. It tries to slow down on the descent, but trips and tumbles down at high speed, crashing through several houses before regaining its footing almost without delay. An unknown voice over our loudspeakers. Civilians are not to be moved. You will be shot. I repeat, unintelligible. Several shots are heard, none of which are directed at SP-96. SP-96 stops for one second before running into the crowd of town townsfolk. Throwing many aside and trampling in more, more shots are heard as the crowd and begins dispersing. The loudspeakers are un unintelligible under the vocalizations of SP-96. SCP-96 locates it's SCP-961, a middle-aged man, and the camera view is SCP-96 grabbing him before it is hit by a fleeing townsperson and is located from the helmet. 
and log. Begin log. Video interview log 961C. This is between a Major Jack Wilford, or trying to Wilford, and an interviewer of unknown name. Wilford being the current commander on MDF Tau 1. I was looking through SCP 961's house with my squad. Poor our guy was a semi pro mountaineer. Took a trip to o blank. Apparently, he took a screenshot, a snapshot of the landscape, and just happened to oh, catch SCP 96 in the background. Wilford holds up four fingers em for emphasis. Four pixels. Four freaking pixels. I thought the guy even knew what he saw. Who's probably just looking at the picture one day, knows enough color or patch of snow, and went on what to say. How did you find it? Our scramble gear picked it up right away. The lieutenant got the picture and took it down onto the chopper before I ever got to see it. By then, the damn months, once I had taken that big brother and had I'd peeled open the former major sh uh, striker. All heck was racing, you can lose. So the scrabble gear was ineffective? Ineffective! The it gosh darn scramble were pieces of crap that killed the whole oh dang task force. You know, only three people are alive besides me. All because some idiot, an egg had thought out of a state of the art camera measure to SCP 96's hostile reaction. Those bloody morons. Could have just put a bag over the target's head and be done with it. But no, we had to use stay of the freaking art, art scramble. And log. Here's the picture. Obviously, the dangerous parts of it are already blocked out. And circled in yellow, so you know what it is. Anyway, begin log. What did that freaker call me? Dr. Dan pushes back from the table and begins ending up. I'll show that gosh darn son of a, a mother what an egghead is after I bash open his interview begins shouting and cursing. Two guards enter the room and push Dr. Dan back into the seat. Do we need to administer a sedative, Doctor? Dr. Dan takes a breath and smooths his coat. No, no, I apologize. <sighs> Scramble was really an ingenious idea. However, it was a failure because we did not fully know how SCP-96 worked. You see, as a chip inside Scramble picked up SCP-96, in-96's facial features and began scrambling them, there was a split second of uninterrupted light flow to the retina. Computers are fast, but not as fast as light. So there was a split second image of SCP-96's direct face sent to the brain. It wasn't even consciously received, but apparently it was enough to trigger the hostile reaction SCP-96. So with this report of the photograph, that's what, that's the most disturbing part of this whole incident. You know when the Foreman or 961 went on his master trip? 1990. That's unknown years of that photo hanging there before he saw SP-96. This brain doesn't need to be aware er, or that is viewing SP-96's face as to trigger the reaction. There could be ticking time bombs hidden literally anywhere in the world. How many photographs are out there containing SV-96, just going unnoticed, waiting for a careful eye? As I said before, I want this thing terminated. Now! <sighs> just a quick question, Doctor. Um, what exactly were you planning on doing there? Major Jack Wilford was top-notch uh, uh, SBS when we recruited him. I don't know what SBS is. I was also a recon corpsman, sir. 
and was deployed in the AKSS Marines Beats SBS. No, they don't. Enough, both of you. Moving on. Begin in log. Video interview log SV961D. Chief Master Sergeant, or CMS as I'm going to, I mean CMS as I'm going to call him. Thor Gunner under Echo Romeo. I got the bag over its head. Yes, you've told me that. Could you tell me exactly what transpired? It, it was done with all its, it was sitting there in the highway. Just got done ripping open, open a minivan. Interview is silent. And I'm Westland Copper. I got out and bagged it. I put a bag over its head and got calm and they took it. So the victims in the U minivan were the last two of you to SV 96's face. Interviewee is silent. CMS. Interviewee remained silent for a reminder of the interview and was released. He was later found in his bunk room, having committed suicide via a hanging with a makeshift rope. A half crushed fast fire was found in his fist. Oh, right. This gets dark. Begin log. <sighs> Video log 961D. Confiscated tape from the news broadcast CNN. CNN, I mean. The image shows first responders surrounding the remains of a crash plane over the shoulder of a field reporter. Report. The plane, which seems to be military in or origin, has no outward markings designated as part of the U.S. military. While first responders look for a black box recording, it is thought by police that a plane and crash due to massive cabin breach in both the, the cockpit and, and fuselage. The reporter mentions to a large hole in the side of the plane, which several firefighters are climbing inside. Her remarks have only found three bodies, which is odd for a plane apparently requiring a crew of around 20 men. Police have, uh, have adjusted. Her report is caught off as three super stallions are shown hovering overhead, two of which land and then begin unloading in troops belonging to MTF Absalon. MTF E1. Shut off the camera. Shut off the mother freaking end log. Begin log. Dr. Alexi. So, are we finished here? One last question, Doctor, or statement as it seems. We find interesting that there was no a break room at the research site at blank. Or coffee. The interview remains silent. We think it would be best if you begin talking. Vendor of interview log 961A, a redacted. End log. I don't think what that has to do with me. There's no reason to play dumb, Doctor. He told us everything. Well then, I guess there's no finding anything, is there? Auto recording. 05 hearing. O five one. Upon reviewing your testimony and available footage and the confession of the late Dr. Olesai, it is the unanimous agreement that the of the O5 that you are to be terminated for your part in the gross breach of SCP-96. And I thought you would know the meaning of for the greater good. Do not try my patience, doctor. Given the instant scope and potential, the O5 have approved your request for your termination for the termination of SCP-96. Given the lack of personnel with understanding of SCP-96, the termination will be entrusted to you. Under heavy guard and the personnel and the personal supervision of me, your own termination will be scheduled at a later date.
That's horrible, Doctor. How could you knowingly? It worked. There was only a matter of time until that happened in a major population center, and its face spread over the world news. I can kill 96, but I've killed myself in the process. Audio log from interview 96-1. Dr. Blank, I'm guessing Dr. Dan. Inter no, interviewer is Dr. Blank. Interviewed is Captain Rhett, for former commander of the retrieval team Zula 9A. Retrieval incident 96-1A. Begin log. Blank time. Research area blank. It always sucks to get initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the dang thing is capable of besides what jacked up information the field tech is going to scrape up. And you're lucky if they even tell you the whole story. They told us to bag and tag. Then tell us as, as, as anything about not looking at the dang thing. Can you describe the mission, please? Yeah, sorry. We had two choppers. One with my team and one in the back of Azula 9B and Dr. Blank. We spotted the dog here at, at about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction. Else he would have taken us out then and there. Your report says 96 didn't react to the cold? It was negative blank degrees Celsius. Actually, it was negative blank, and yes, it was butt naked and didn't so much as shiver. And we landed, approached the target, and Corporal Blank got right to back it. That's when Dr. Blank called. I turned to answer it, and that's what saved me. The target must have turned, and my whole, whole squad saw it. That's when SCP-96 entered an agitated emotional state. Yep. Interviewed, now pauses for a second before continuing. Sorry, got the willies for a second. That's alright. Well, I never saw its face. My squad did, and they paid for or it, it up the... Could you describe it a little more, please? Yeah, yeah. It started screaming at us and crying. Not animal roaring, though. Sound exactly like a person. Really freaking creepy. Pauses again. We started firing when it picked up Corporal Blank and ripped off of his leg. Gosh, he was screaming for our help. Freaking A. Anyway, we were laying chucks out of the target round after round. Didn't do anything. I was lost when it started and that I expunged him. <sighs> That's when you or the use of an papers are heard moving. AT4 HEDT launcher? An anti tank gun. Sorry, carrying it ever since SP Blank got loose. I've seen those tear through tanks like tissue paper. Did the same thing to the target. There was significant damage to SP 96. It didn't even freaking flinch! It kept tearing apart my squad, but with half of its torso gone. It draws a large half circle across his torso. But it was taking damage. If it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all its organs, all its blood, but I didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. It kept tearing my squad apart. So no actual structural damage. How many rounds would you say were fired at SP-96? At the least, a thousand. Our door running captain is GAU-19 on it for at least 20 seconds. 20 freaking seconds! That's 650 caliber rounds pumped into the thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. This is when Zulu 9B arrived? Yeah, and my squad was gone. Zulu 9B managed to get the bag over its head, and I just sat down. We got into the chopper and got here. I don't know how I never saw its face. Maybe God or Buddha or whoever or thought I should live. The jerk. We have a, have obtained an artist's depiction of SP-96's face. Would you like to view it? 
You know, after hearing that thing screams and the screams of my men, I don't think I want to put a face to my to what I heard. No. Just no. Alright, I believe we are dog and here. Thank you, Captain. Chairs are heard moving and footsteps leave the room. Captain Red is confirmed to have left and to be room twenty two. Dr. Blank. Let this be on record that I am formally requesting SCP-96 be terminated as soon as possible. Anyway, that was SCP-96, the shy guy, as he is well known to be called. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like I got a video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring that little bell on notification as it does help a lot. I'll see you next time to finish out the first 100 SCPs.